Researcher Harris finished the last pieces of his model and set it down as it walked away to join its fellows. For the last hour, he had been creating Lego space marines and assorted vehicles and adding them into the large city that the staff of Site-19 have established using SCP-387. As the marine joined ranks with the dozens of others that he made, he watched at a silent awe as the marines began to interact with the city before the emergency clocks began to blur. God damn it, he thought. Another kettle breach. His colleagues and him all rushed out of the room as the Lego citizens waved goodbye to their creators and friends. The space marines saluted Researcher Harris as he left the room, shutting the door behind him. Around the same time, Junior Researcher Jace was transporting the Play-Doh, designated as SCP-705, back to its containment chamber. As he was passing the break room, he too also responded to the emergency breach, and in haste dropped 705's container as he ran to his designated station. As the container hit the floor, the lid popped off, and within minutes, a platoon of army men formed from the mass. The platoon leader led them under the door to see if they can find a spot to capture. Barbet, what do you see up ahead? The clay sergeant awaited the returning scout as he went back towards the temporary hiding spot. Twenty clicks to the east, a large city made from sort of modular brick. Two clicks ahead, a large unattended supply depot. We can form a base from there, sergeant. Excellent! Good work, soldier! He gave the thumbs up to the platoon commander, who began to bark out orders as the band of soldiers proceeded to the respiratory of clay. Jack was walking his dog down the western end of Main Brick Street, and a hello to all of his neighbors as he enjoyed the fresh scent of an afternoon walk. Rumors spread of new arrivals today, clad in large blue armor and carrying machine guns around. He wondered why anyone needed machine guns these days. It's not like there were any pesky imitation blocks around. As he rounded the corner, he heard weird mechanical whirring off past the tree line. Perhaps the researchers were trying some sort of new thing with the electronic stuff. Or perhaps it was the new arrivals with the fancy war machines. He knelt to the ground for a second when a giant non lego mecha burst from the tree line, spitting bullets with large ferocity shells. Jack was caught in a strike and lay dismembered as the clay soldiers continued with a sudden strike deeper into the city. Barlow Brothers, report! The Marine Sergeant looked upon his squad as they all stood with a salute. The inconsistent light shining off of the pauldrons. They were the Emperor's finest, and no man would ever. Before the first Marine could report his status, a stray clay bullet impacted the sergeant in the chest plate. He fell backwards, and the Marines immediately ran to cover their falling superior from any other fire. Across the landing zone, other Marines began to assemble under their squad leaders, while the company commander and his retinue began to convene in a sudden raid and they had been caught up in. The sergeant lifted himself up and thanked the emperor. The bullet simply flanned upon hitting his blessed armor. Uttering his praises to the emperor, he stood resolute as the company commander yelled for a swift counterattack and motioned for all the marines to move forward and to deliver divine judgment upon the enemies of mankind. The sergeant yelled for victory and for vengeance as he and his brothers moved forward, their bolters blazing as they moved towards the unrighteous. Man, that was one hell of a breach. Glad that those containment guys got all that handled. These such as Harris and Jordans confessed and laughed as they proceeded back towards the brick to continue constructing their Lego creations and finishing up their lab reports. As they entered the hallway to get to the break room, they saw junior researcher Jays running from the opposite end. He stopped as he first looked at the ground, and then towards the two researchers approaching him, he looked upon the container on the ground and uttered a simple, Oh crap! before facing the two researchers who came to him. Something wrong, Jays? 
Jordans looked at a now flustered junior researcher before his ears turned to a faint rumble emanating from the break room. He was about to tap Harris when he turned and saw the same sight that was unfolding before her eyes. Holy crap! was the only thing that all three of them could manage to push from their mouths. Marines took positions in the now ruined towers of downtown Main Brick Street when a dreadnought provided cover for advancing tentacle squads. Clay artillery shells whistled through the air while heavy bolt of fire and crack missiles mash into opposing infantry lines. Among them, Lego minifigs were running to escape the catechism, while police officers provided assistance to the marines by using their cars as mobile cover and by shooting at the clay soldiers with their smaller inferior weapons. Feel the heat of the emperor's very heretic! Battle Brother Cypher aimed his flamer and ignited an advancing light infantry squad while the bullet bounced off his helmet and pauldrons. He continued to steadily advance, setting flame to the enemy with his blessed Promethean flamer, while his battle brothers continued to fire their bolters from behind him and protect him. As the marines pushed forward, they heard a rather frightening sound rounding the corner. It appeared to be an enemy super-heavy tank. Bang blade! yelled Cypher as he dived for cover while the vehicle's primary cannon launched a shot of clay into a business tower, sending many bigs falling through their demise or being crushed by the large pieces of debris that rained from above. Cypher was buried underneath the rubble but forced himself out and began his burning inferno anew. The clay super heavy continued to dispense destruction while the soldiers followed behind, while the lesser minifigs dropping their weapons and running. The marines continued to hold their ground, firing whatever they could into the clay tank while being pummeled by the artillery cannons situated behind the trees. Brother Captain Arteris smashed away another soldier with his thunder hammer. Watching the energy set the soldier flying into pieces and battering the nearby walls of the building. He swept the hammer around and managed to set a light clay vehicle onto its side before bringing the hammer down to utterly destroy its occupant in the name of the Emperor. Before he could swing his hammer once more, he heard the sound of retro rockets firing in the air and knew that the time had come to destroy the heretics and bring glory and praise to the Emperor. Battle brothers, charge forward and show these fools the power of the Emperor! Glory be to his name! Adaris charged the super heavy and destroyed his turret with a flying swing of his ancient hammer, while the marines behind him yelled aloud, cheered and followed, bolters and flamers blazing to exterminate! The dreadnoughts and predators continued to blast away at the enemy emplacements, taking out the machine gun nests and the snipers that attempted to harass the charging marines, and the snipers that attempted to harass the charging marines. Behind the tree line, the clay artillery pieces continued to walk the rounds back, attempting to keep the marines away from their established positions. An artillery spotter was about to aim at one of the pelleters when he looked up and was promptly crushed underneath the weight of a drop pod. Two more pods opened and terminus began to pour out with the storm bolters blazing. A soldier attempted to toss a fragmentation grenade at the heavily armored figures before being swept aside by a power fist. Chain fists tore through the enemy pillboxes and bunkers, and the Terminators began to advance towards the brothers, trapping the clay soldiers in between two moving walls of death. Behind the Terminators, Storm Ravens dropped off the mighty land raiders and continued their advance, unimpeded by the enemy's light bullets. At the end of the day, with the last clay soldier executed, the marines sounded their praise to the Emperor. Brother Captain Adoris looked upon the college while the apothecaries tended to the wounded and the fallen marines and all of the civilians that assisted them in rooting the marble enemy. As he began to walk back towards the new base of operations, a child minifig ran up to him and grabbed the leg of his power armor. 
Who are you guys? The child asked with a sense of curiosity behind his painted black eyes. The captain smiled and told the child, We are the Emperor's finest, and today we bring salvation to this hive. He continued to walk back with a thunder hammer over his shoulders, and the child waved back at him. And that child's mine, he thought. I want to be like him. Let's never do that again, remarked Jace as Jordan, Harris, and him picked up the last pieces of clay and finally reinstated the containment of 705, they left the League of Figurines on their own, as they could rebuild their city and take care of their injured. As Harris walked out of the break room, as he saw his initially small marine force laying down the foundations for a monastery, and in temp of sentimental value, saluted the marines. The brother captain saw him salute and lifted up his hammer to return the gesture.